Have you felt like your life is on repeat? You grow, you crash, you reset. I want to tell you that that is not an accident. That cycle that you go through is not a cycle of failure. Your brain is actually wired to go through that cycle because that is how the brain grows. So I wanted to make this video today to help you all understand how growth happens in the brain and how can you navigate through these stages of growth. I have broken it down into seven stages that your brain goes through as you grow in life and how can you keep moving forward. So let's get into it. But before we start, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. You want to see more such videos. I want to keep making more such videos. Motivate me. Do it. Now, stage number one is called I feel stuck. This is when the situation in your life stops being comfortable for you. Maybe you've been here for too long. Maybe others have moved past and gone on to other things. Whatever the reason, your brain's baseline dopamine levels have started falling. Life is not exciting anymore. Nothing is a challenge. And you start feeling that something is off. And this is when your brain's default mode network takes over. That's when your mind starts wandering, you start daydreaming, you start wondering what else can there be. It might start ruminating, you might start thinking of things you left behind and you start questioning your life. So if you are in this stage, how do you move forward? Don't fight the restlessness. It's there for a reason. Observe it. In this stage, you don't really have to act. You just have to become aware of what is going on. Writing your thoughts down in the form of journaling, taking long walks to observe your thoughts, talking to your closest friends, your family about what is going on. All of these things will help you get more clarity about your restlessness. This is a stage to simply observe and take in more information because your prefrontal cortex needs all the data it can get in order to make all the plans in the future. Which brings me to stage number two, I want to do something. This is an important stage because this is where you admit to yourself that whatever your situation was before, that is not good enough. You cannot keep feeling stuck. You need to move forward. This is where you finally admit that whatever was bothering you deserves some action. Now your dopamine system reactivates. There is a spike of excitement, anticipation. You now realize that you will make some change in your life. If you're in this stage, the way to move forward is to channel your curiosity. Go after whatever interests you. Try out new hobbies, experiments. You're basically helping your frontal cortex to gather information about what feels rewarding. What is it? that you would like to do after this. Which brings me to stage three, which is a stage of confusion of what do I do? Now that you've decided that something needs to be done, this is when fear starts creeping back in. The amygdala in your limbic system starts firing because it realizes you don't have a plan yet. All it knows is you need to do something and your prefrontal cortex asks, but do what exactly? And you don't have an answer. It's almost like a tug of war between two parts of your brain, or as they call it, a cognitive dissonance. Now, this stage can feel confusing, but it can also feel exciting, especially if you're young, because all possibilities are open. But if you are older, this can be scary, especially when other people around you look at you and say, wait, how can you be restless? Shouldn't you know by now what you want to do? If you are in this stage, the way to move forward is to stop looking for the perfect next step. Your prefrontal cortex would ideally like to know everything about what you want to do before it commits to a plan of action. But unfortunately, that's not how life or your brain works. You have to first start moving in order for things to become clearer. As you start moving, you get more information and then your prefrontal cortex will be able to commit to something. Your brain learns by doing, not by deciding. In the brain, right behind your prefrontal cortex is an area called anterior cingulate cortex. This is the part that detects errors. Now, the reason why action brings clarity is because as you move, the ACC learns to predict errors more accurately. So it makes less mistakes. And so it can choose better as you keep moving forward. Remember, you don't decide to move, you move to decide. Which brings us to stage four, how do I do this? This is an important stage because here you have already decided what you want to do. In your exploration in the previous stages, you have come across something that has excited you and you know that this is what you want to do. But now again, your amygdala is triggered because it realizes that you don't really know how to do it yet. And what if you fail? 
your amygdala starts predicting the chances of failure, of rejection, of pain and now your prefrontal cortex is in a decision paralysis. It wants to move ahead and do something but fear is holding it back. If you are in this stage, the way to move forward is by shrinking the action. Whatever it is you want to do, break it down into smaller and smaller pieces until it feels doable. Do not go for a large goal. Instead, do the next easiest step. Pick up that phone and dial a number. Just send one email. Do not worry about what will happen if they respond or what will happen if somebody picks up. Make that first move. Make it easy for your PFC to commit to that smallest action and things become better. Instead of quitting the job, update your resume. Instead of building a business, write the first paragraph of your plan. Just enough to have a dopamine spike which in turn will motivate you to do the next step. Which brings us to stage 5 of the growth cycle which is this is harder than I thought. Now that you're in motion and you're doing something, reality hits, you realize that you underestimated how hard this is going to be. There are challenges that you never saw coming and now you are dealing with problems that you never thought you would even face. That initial dopamine spike of novelty has worn off and now you wonder, did I make the wrong choice? Should I have left my comfortable zone? Why am I doing this at all? If you're in this stage, remember that this is exactly where resilience is built. It's the same situation even in a physical exercise like a plank or in a mental exercise like sticking to your goals. When you start tolerating discomfort and learning to deal with it, you are building emotional and cognitive resilience. But the only warning that I would give here is an important part of resilience is also rest and recovery. So if you find yourself tolerating stress for a longer period of time, make sure that you also take enough time stepping away from it, getting good rest, getting good recovery and then coming back and doing it again. It is the lack of rest and recovery that leads to burnout and trauma more than the stress itself. And that brings us to stage number six, which is success, which I call yay. This is where you hit your first milestone, dopamine spikes, you have a huge boost of positive self-identity, you are congratulating yourself and you deserve it. You have done something that was very difficult. But this feeling of success is transient. That dopamine spike doesn't last. It comes back down and your brain adapts to this new level. This is called hedonic adaptation. If you are in that stage, how do you move forward? You enjoy it. You congratulate yourself for succeeding, but you don't cling on to it. As soon as you can, shift your focus away from that outcome back to process. This is where gratitude journaling and reflection practices help because that way you can incorporate this feeling of success into your identity and use that as emotional fuel to take you to the next stage. And finally, we come to stage number seven, which is I feel stuck. You are back at that feeling of restlessness, that feeling that something is off. But the reason that I've kept this at stage 7 and not back to stage 1 is because here, something is different. Now that you've gone through this cycle, you know how growth works. You know that growth is not a straight line. Growth, in fact, looks like a spiral. You feel like you are circling that same spot again and again. But if you look at it on a long enough time scale, you realize that that's not true. While it may seem like you're circling, you're actually spiraling upwards. There is a growth in terms of time, in terms of efficiency. What took you 100% of your effort five years ago, today only takes you 1% or maybe not even that much. That is a sign of growth. How much more easily can you achieve the same things that you could before? So if you are anywhere in the middle of this messy cycle of growth that your brain goes through, now you know what is the path forward and you know how to get to the next step. I hope you find this video useful. If you want to see more such videos, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to take a deep dive into neuroscience, I have my neuroscience workshops that are online. You can sign up for them. They are meant for everybody. I will link them in the description below. I love you all. I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone. Take care.